Entrepreneurially Thinking is a presentation of BioSTL and CET, Center for Emerging Technologies, with Rare Gem Productions, changing the way you view new ventures, including you on the pathway to success with your business in the St. Louis marketplace and beyond. Here's your hosts, Cheryl and Christy. Now let's get thinking entrepreneurially. Welcome back to the Entrepreneurially Thinking Podcast. Our goal is to elevate your entrepreneurial mindset and create pathways for business success in the St. Louis marketplace and beyond. I'm Christy Maxfield. And I'm Dr. Cheryl Watkins Moore. I lead our BioSTL's inclusion initiative for our region. Hey, lady. How are you? We're back. We are. Wow. You know, by the time folks hear this, we will have probably been through holiday break, Ooh. right? Yes. Taking a little, because we're, you know... Not to brag or anything, but, you know, we've got a few recordings under our belt so that we can take a little hiatus over we the holidays. We work hard. We work hard, right? So, you know, by the time you're listening, we're rocking 2019. Yes. We closed out 2018. Happy New Year. Happy New Year with more than 25... Uh, thousand. thousand plays and downloads, more than a hundred shows. Yes. And we're just really grateful to all of our listeners mm -hmm. and our founding sponsors, uh, bio STL and CET, CET for their continued support. Yes. So find out what they're doing now in the new year, stay mm -hmm. connected and help us spread the word. If you can find us on your favorite podcast platforms, whether that's iTunes, Spreaker, Facebook, LinkedIn, we're glad to be with you and hope you'll continue to uh, make us part of your podcast lineup. Yeah. So as we go move forward with all of our exciting guests and our wonderful um, interviews, what are we doing today? Mm, well, here we go. As y'all know, the increasing number of health conscious consumers has catapulted the demand for clean label products globally. Skincare and beauty collections are rapidly emerging with more and more brands offering organic options. I mean, it's amazing. When and you we look see at lots of um, fashion, food, beauty yes. as part of the Square One yes. programming. Um, so, yeah, we're seeing this right here locally as well. Absolutely. So locally, one company is developing a product line that draws from the earth to provide everything you need to be healthy. That's amazing. It is. So when we come back. You're going to learn more about the company whose mission it is to help clients discover the beauty and harmony between skin, spirit, and the natural world. Wow. As opposed to the unnatural, supernatural world. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> anyway. You left me speechless. <laughs> When we come back, LaCrosia Wilderness joins us after the break. So stay listening. BioSTL is a proud founding sponsor of this Entrepreneurially Thinking podcast. And we want you to know all about the great things they are up to. BioSTL Fundamentals is an entrepreneur development program designed to support early would-be entrepreneurs in the life sciences in St. Louis. The program provides a one-on-one -on -one customized business learning experience for each participant. You can learn more about BioSTL Fundamentals by visiting BioSTL.org. And for your renewed and continuing support, BioSTL, we say thank you. I am LaCrosia Wilderness from Butter Love, and entrepreneurial thinking to me is failing forward. Joining us today is LaCrosia Wilderness, creator and owner of Butter Love. She is mixing her love of nature to create an organic skincare line. And yes. become, before becoming an entrepreneur, like many of the folks who sat in our studio with us, she mm -hmm. had a, a career in corporate America, specifically mm -hmm. in customer service. Having studied marketing and advertising, she knew that side of the business really well and then has blended, see what I did there, her, um, her desire to really explore uh, natural oils, shea butters, organics in mm. search of the right products for herself, which we know so many entrepreneurs uh. start with what the need they have is. And then yes. they know lots of other folks have that need too, and they go out and find it. So, Lacrosia, thank you so much for yes. being with us. Thank you so much for having and me. And you all don't realize that she's sitting here with us and, and Christy. And I both said when she walked in, we were like, oh, my God, you smell so good. Oh, the studio smells amazing. It's a very subtle because, you yes. know, I got the, the allergy thing. Yes. So it's very subtle. It just beautiful. makes me feel yes. sort of wrapped in a really yumminess mm -hmm. without being overwhelming at all. It's wonderful. Well, thank you. So yes. I have to imagine that's one of your products. Yes. Uh, it's the patchouli and hemp. 
Ah, oh, I thought I had a hint of patchouli in there. Okay. But I mix it with a hint of bergamot. So I sweeten it up a little bit. Ah. Yeah. So okay. That sounds like buttery love to me. Yes. yes. <laughs> a lot yes. of butter love. I like that. So yes. tell us more about yourself. Oh, my goodness. Butter yeah. love. Um, you know, Cheryl always starts at the very beginning. So <laughs> where did you come I like from? To, I like to just, you know, keep that in bite-sized portions. Hit. But are you from St. Louis? I am from St. Louis. Okay. I grew up in North City okay. Okay, with my mom and my brother. Mm-hmm. And um, I grew up here. I went to college in Chicago. Came back home. Um, where did you go to school in Chicago? Uh, Columbia College in Chicago. Okay. And okay. I have a very, very close friend that, that uh, works there. Sheila Carter. I don't know if you know her. Um, um, no, I'm not familiar. She, I think she heads up something on the um, education So shout side. out to Sheila. Yes, yeah, shout out to <laughs> and Sheila. Our, and our and Chicago, Chicago and our Chi Town people. Yes. I love Chicago. Yes. Right? Ah, okay. So then you went up there, you came back to mm-hmm. St. Louis. What were you doing when you came back? <sighs> Falling apart. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We what? like that <laughs> honesty. She's like, just it was a white hot mess. It was a lot. Was was a lot. Mess. When I was in college, mm-hmm. I was going to school full time and working part time, and I had a part time oh, internship at oh, like a, a really prestigious company, and it was just a lot of stress on me. Mm. So my dad was like, "You can come home." I'm like, mm. "Isn't that can nice?" I? <laughs> That's, that's so not. I mean, there's something. I mean, that's family. Most of us know we can, <laughs> but yeah. when you actually hear the words uttered, like, yes. you know what? Even though you're adulting right now, yeah. If you want to not adult a yeah. series, like it's hardcore adulting, and like yes. take a step back, you can. Yeah. Like, so I appreciated that so huge. much. I got on a train the next day, <laughs> <laughs> like, and make the bed up exactly because <laughs> when I my internship ended and I learned a lot, but it was just a lot of stress mm. and. um what was I, your, you worked in a advertising company? Yes, uh, okay. Nielsen. It was actually um, market research, but I oh, worked okay. in their public relations department. Okay. And I worked under the SVP of mm. public relations. And that was... You um, learned a lot, but I it was... I learned so much. I'm sure. And that I wasn't ready for. Oh, wow. <laughs> but, you know, you just throw yourself in. You do the best that you can. Right. But have you ever seen the movie Devil Wears Prada? Uh-huh. Of course. Where she felt like she just couldn't do anything right. Uh-huh. And she just was just complaining to her boyfriend. And that was you? That was me, like, crying every other night. And Aww. I'm like, oh, my God, I want to go home. <laughs> so you came home. And came what did home. you do after a good long nap? Um, tried and to get my life together. a lot of alcohol, probably. <laughs> right. Now, don't put words in her mouth. Her right. daddy didn't say That's she could come home yeah. and do that. No, honestly, I just really took some time for myself mm-hmm. and did the best that I could that I knew how to mm-hmm. get my life back together. Okay. So um, my dad got me a job for the company that he worked uh-huh. for. So that was full time. I didn't have a car, so I had to get a car. Uh-huh. And then like in college, like me and my friend, uh, Lorelai. Shout out to Lorelai. We would make products for our hair because we were going natural at the time. Uh And we were just like looking for something that wasn't store bought that Mm -hmm. was actually going to work because what we were buying was not working for our hair. We hear that a lot from our entrepreneurs who are in the the space of hair care and skin care Mm -hmm. for women of color, particularly for black women. Yes. That, you know, even if you find something store bought. Often yeah. you have to switch after not too long because it's just not doing what you need yeah, to Clairol do anymore. Yeah, doesn't kind of work for us. And yeah. uh, <laughs> and <laughs> and that uh, like oh, it's really that like when we talk about this need, it's mm-hmm. born of this very personal need to like yeah. find mm-hmm. things that work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So then you have to rely on yourself to make it happen, right? So basically, we would like make these concoctions and we would mix together all these things like shea butter, coconut oil, sweet Mm. almond oil, put our favorite fragrance in it and we would do our twist outs and put it on our skin as well when we got the shower. So we just knew the benefits Uh um, because when I was younger, like my mom, like here we have like an African arts festival Mm -hmm. every year and it's a three day festival and here is in St. Louis. Yes. Mm -hmm. Here is in St. Louis Mm -hmm. at Forest Park under the World's Fair Pavilion. Yep. And my mom would buy tubs of shea butter, mm. like tubs of it. And it's a great more. It's a great everything. It's literally all purpose. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> when in doubt, all healing, shea it all up. purpose yes. thing. And I already knew the benefits because I suffered from dry skin, mm-hmm. like growing up. And mm-hmm. I literally would have like dry skin on my legs to the point where I would just scratch, scratch. all the time. Mm. And my mom would buy shea butter and put that on and it literally moisturized mm-hmm. like my skin from within. Mm. And 
I just kind of ran with that, and then I. So were you in, in undergrad? Were you a, in the science background? Not at all. No, no science, no chemistry, no, no nothing, huh? Not at all. I actually started as a kid <laughs> 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 mixing chemicals in my closet and hiding it from my mom. <laughs> Oh and yeah, that's how I kind of. So you were, were you selling any of these kind of You were just using it yourself? Honestly, like when I was a kid or mm-hmm. like when in you college. Were a kid. Mm-hmm. No, it was literally just chemicals to see if something will react. Or... So you were just naturally curious about science. Yeah. Yeah, that's really yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least you didn't have the volcano erupting in your closet. No, no explosion. Right. <laughs> she would always find it. She would always find it. You weren't as sly as you thought you were. Right. I was never. She was like, why do you keep doing this in my closet? I'm like, I don't know. I have a science habit I and I know. need right. intervention. So you and your girlfriend started making these concoctions. Mm-hmm. And then when you came back to St. Louis, how did you reach back to that time period when you were mixing up? And in- Honestly, it was a mixture of that and a mixture of I ran out of my products that I was using in Chicago. So I just started ordering. Yeah. I just needed more Mm -hmm. and I was experimenting and I ordered all this stuff off Amazon, like avocado butter and Mm. like aloe butter and coconut oil Mm. and shea butter. And I was just experimenting in my room and I was like, okay, well maybe I should take this down to the kitchen. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And then uh, I did. And it took me months to, like figure out a formula that I actually mm. liked. I tried so many different things. Mm. So many, like you can freeze it and you can melt it down and then freeze it and then wait for it to, I'm like, this so takes you, too much time. You were testing. You yeah, were I doing, was testing mm-hmm. without even realizing market research, that yeah. I was testing. I was honestly just like trying to figure out what I wanted. Like mm-hmm. something that incorporated all the things that I love, all the things that are going to heal me. Mm-hmm. But also I wanted to be soft and I wanted to be, smelling good (laughs) feeling nice when I put it on because as women we want to feel beautiful we want to feel like soft and Mm -hmm. so I made something that I love and how long ago was this uh, when when did butter love come into existence Uh, 2014 Ah, 2014 I came home and figured it out and then um, so how did you think about this is a business that I want to do um, How did you go about that process? Yeah, I mean, there's a big leap from taking care of yourself, right? right? Yeah. And to saying, this is good enough to go out in the world and there's yeah. more women who need to enjoy this. Yeah, I agree. It was honestly just friends believing in me mm. to kind of push me along. Like, I was finding all these different jars that I wanted to put it in mm. and just kind of doing things on my own. And mm-hmm. I introduced, like, I showed it to a friend at mm-hmm. Afropunk. And he was just like, this is nice. And I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah. Just so what's kinda... Afropunk? Afropunk is a festival in New York. Mm-hmm. They do it every year with black artists. It's amazing. It's like literally life changing. So <laughs> did you target to go to, their, go to that festival to take your product there? No. I just went there to have fun. <laughs> Showed it to a friend. That's called yeah. market got, research. Got some encouragement. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Just And you know, like those friends that influence you mm-hmm. and just have, like, they inspire you. Yeah. And it was one of those friends who just... And we like, always say you can't rely on a focus group of one and that right. you definitely can't rely on just your friends or family. But it does take that spark of somebody mm-hmm. seeing something just beyond what you see for yourself mm-hmm. to say, hmm... Where can I go with this? Mm-hmm. What's possible? Yeah. So he was just and like, he was that for you. Doing, yeah. He was like, you should be selling this. And I'm like, yeah, I'm just like kind of doing whatever. And he's like, no, I don't think you're hearing me. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you should be doing. I was like, you instead know of what? the nine to five that you were doing. Exactly. Yeah. And I came back home just so inspired and I just hit the ground running and I made a website and I made business cards and just tried to figure it out. So it was kind of um, organic, uh, kind of the transition. And just from there, I put my all into it and just kind of, it goes up and down just like any type of business. But so you launched in 2014. I did. You started selling. Are you selling online or are you selling in stores or what are you doing? (laughs) Yes. And yes. So tell us about that journey. So, um, I started with a big cartel website just to kind of get it out there. I was taking pictures on my iPhone and a big cartel website. mm -hmm. What the hell does that mean? Well, big cartel (laughs) is a platform. A girl, I know. Uh, (laughs) Just just bring her up to speed. That's okay. Okay. (laughs) 
It's all good. I've been in marketing forever. I'm like, honey, things have moved fast. Big car tell me something different, but go ahead. Tell me. <laughs> literally like a website platform that you can create a site mm-hmm. and put your products on. You have a little bit of leeway as far as um, the design is concerned. Okay. But um, can you do e-commerce on it? Then? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yes. Okay. It's an e-commerce cool. website. So okay. low cost to entry, low barrier low to cost, entry. Mm-hmm. Yes. Bare minimum. <laughs> really? <laughs> so you did your own website. I did. Okay. And um, I went from there. And then you know how you get into the community. I did my first event. It was a fashion show. Some friends that I knew, they did like a kid's fashion show. Um, shout out to Lillian, mm-hmm. who uh, does these really big, lavish fashion shows for wow. kids. Mm. And she was like, I would love for you to sell your products there. And I'm like, okay. Um, I don't know if I'm ready, but <laughs> I'll do it. And I did. It was horrible. I freaked out. <laughs> I love this because it's like, what, it's when I came home, I was a mess. Yes. That was your first gig. It was horrible. It this was is, this horrible. is life, right? This is totally real life. Real life. life. Right. Yeah. Living you learn. So I didn't even have a tablecloth. I had these like buckets with the body <laughs> butters in it. I had like a dry erase sign that I wrote butter love on. And literally... It was horrible. It was so. It but was you not still, cute. you took a step forward. I took right. a step, eight people bought body butters. I sold eight body butters, wow. and I was so proud of myself. Hey, that's and I awesome. Kind of kept it moving after that, and then someone else found me, mm-hmm. and I did another show, and I stepped up my presentation, mm-hmm. and then did another show, and then I stepped it up even more, mm-hmm. and it just kind of transition from there just I wanted to be better each time mm-hmm. and um, just in that community like the maker community mm-hmm. we help each other sure so that, was, we, that was my next question so how did you improve sounds like you didn't go back to school to do any of no. this stuff you learned it through trial and er- error yes I learned it from trial and error and I also learned from my mom mm-hmm. my mom is very creative very hands-on mm-hmm. And she can make whatever happen and make it look good. And I feel like that was passed down to me. Uh So I use, I tap into that. I tap into what I would want it to look like. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of maneuver from there and make it happen. So that's the presentation style. So how are you, how did you learn the back end side of your business? You know, from the accounting to the manufacturing, because are you still making this in your kitchen? Uh, No, I have like a studio in my house. Okay. Yeah. So you're still doing it on your own. I still am doing it on my own. Mm -hmm. And um, I used to do it in my dad's basement. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, no, I can't do this anymore. (laughs) But, you know, the grind is real. So you have to make it happen wherever you can make it happen. So I went from the attic to the kitchen to the basement to moving out to (laughs) then moving back in and then moving out again. So I had a space that I could call my own that I could create. So I got an apartment on the south side in Benton Park. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and Great neighborhood. It's mm-hmm. a great neighborhood. Mm-hmm. But I also have 1,200 square feet mm-hmm. of just creative space. Yes. Mm-hmm. And so you have your I, own lab, essentially. I have my own lab. And it literally, I can show you pictures later, like it literally is like my oasis. Like, That's cool. There's stations for you to do things. There's packing stations, body butter station, uh, bath salt station. Yes. Like I literally made a studio space for myself. So when we come back, we'll learn more about what you're doing over there in Benton <laughs> Park. And nothing has exploded, so that's a good thing. Right? <laughs> <laughs> we'll get more in just a yes. sec. The CET, the Center for Emerging Technologies, is a proud founding sponsor of this Entrepreneurially Thinking podcast. We want you to know all about the great things they are up to. CET is in the business of entrepreneur development, offering a variety of programming to meet the training and technical needs of early stage entrepreneurs. These programs include the Square One Ignite and Boot Camp training program, Level Next technical assistance, workshops, and other educational programming. To learn more about CET, the Center for Emerging Technologies, visit CETSTL.com. And for your renewed and continuing support, CET, we say thank you. My name is Matt Wachowkowski, and I'm from the Balsa Foundation. Entrepreneurial thinking to me is really the St. Louis entrepreneurial community coming together and helping people uh, really lift all of ourselves up in an entrepreneurial way. So even back in the early days where your presentation style was maybe not up to the caliber it is today, you had a name. Like, you knew what you wanted to call this. So where did Butter Love come from? 
that's a good question. Um, Butter Love came from weeks of thinking about a name. (laughs) And I kind of wanted it to definitely have the word butter in it because when you look at it, it's whipped like butter Mm -hmm. and it feels really good and it melts onto your skin Mm -hmm. like butter melts. So I was kind of just back and forth like, what am I going to call it? What am I going to call it? And Butter Love just happened. I'm like, well, let me sit with that for a few days. Mm -hmm. Let me see how I feel about it. Mm -hmm. And I started playing with like um, fonts. Like, Mm -hmm. what is this going to look like? Is this, does it have a good ring to it? Because I loved it. And there's also like a song by this group. Butter Love. (laughs) Oh, I know. (laughs) (laughs) That's why I keep playing in my head. (laughs) And that has a ring to it. So I'm just like, hey, we're going to rock with it. Yep. And if I want to change it later, rebranding is a thing. Mm -hmm. But right now, this is what I feel and this is what's important. Cool. So in that oasis of a lab that you have set up in Benton Park, how many products are you making now? A lot of products. Um, (laughs) Because that's a temptation too, right? right, Is you get going and it's like, I could do it this way and I could do it Mm -hmm, that way and mm -hmm. we could customize it. And then you, you know, as entrepreneurs, sometimes that that That, slippery slope. All of those products equals different SKUs. Mm -hmm. So, and how do you account for that? Going with, like Christy said. And raw materials. Yeah. I mean, I love that people have variety, right? But from a business side, um, that's an interesting portfolio to manage. It is, but you have to, I think the biggest thing you have to find is what do you want your line to look like? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like you can always add things, Mm -hmm. but you need a core. And what is my core? Uh, My core are the body butters and I have um, seven different body butters. And then I was like, okay, well, I'm thinking about skincare. What else do I love? Mm -hmm. I love bath salts. So I have two different bath salts that are all healing. So just, just really good products. The smile on your face when you talk about them. I'm like, I've never tried that. I might need to. Her face looks so happy. The same thing. Exactly. Well, you know, I'm hosting a workshop next week. Ooh. And making bath salts, detox bath salts. And where so, are you doing that? At Max Local Eats. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. Or Max Local Buys. It's like mm. a duo yes. thing. Mm-hmm. And I'm really excited about it. I'm going to definitely teach about the benefits of the bath salts. Mm-hmm. And just uh, it's called a wind down while mixing it up. Ooh. So you, it's going to be very like a very calm ambiance and plants and candles and just give you a little me okay. time. You okay. Know, while you mm-hmm. make something that you're really going to enjoy, probably love that it. Night. That's very yeah. cool. <laughs> so we got cool. body butters and mm-hmm. bath salts. Mm-hmm. What else? I also do sugar scrubs for exfoliating mm-hmm. and coffee scrubs, um, mm-hmm. and I also do lip balms. I do face masks. I do um, I love milk baths balms. as well. Do what? Milk baths. Oh yes. Yeah. My yeah, dad taught me. Oh, that's a old, that's old school. school. My yeah. dad taught me the benefits. So now your your parents seem like they have they help you in your business and from a creative stand from a creative stance point standpoint. Mm-hmm. Were they in the beauty business beforehand or no? No. No. Okay. <laughs> no. Okay. No, my dad just when I was living with him and I was going through my <laughs> stuff that I was going through, uh-huh. he was like, Well, I'll just run you a bath. And he ran me a bath and put dry milk in it and Epsom salt. And he just wanted me to relax. And I was like, what? my skin feels amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's, you know, what? it's so funny because entrepreneurs come through different journeys. Mm-hmm. There is some, I call it the classic ones, you know, get the MBA, then they go out and work you know, for somebody. Create, right. And then, then they decide. create something. But it sounds like and it. it Yours is more organic. Mm. You know, you are learning as you go. Yes. You are admitting, and which a lot of entrepreneurs, um, that's what we, we love telling stories here, is because a lot of people look at like the Zuckerberg and think, oh, I, can't, I could never do this because, you know, I don't have his kind of background or, you know, wherever. It it takes everyone doing uh, entrepreneurship from their from their own vantage point. Yes. So, what are the learnings that that you've had to date so far? Because I mean, you're you're in the throes of it. Yeah. So, going back to like what you said about people like feeling like they need to be at some point. Mm-hmm. Honestly, you just need to start, mm-hmm. and you learn along the way, and it's trial and error, and it's hard. But as long as you have that drive, mm-hmm. I think you'll you'll be successful. So, are you still working? No, I quit my job in April. Okay, so you're sustaining yourself. Yes. 
Mom and dad are not sustaining you. She no, wants to clarify. I love that. <laughs> I love that. As I tell my 16-year-old, I don't care what you do, you're not living in my basement in 10 yeah. years. Okay. Yeah. She's got a really nice basement, so it's going to be hard to kick him out. I've seen uh, my biggest worry for you was you ain't getting him out of here. No, I feel that. And I, I didn't want that for myself mm-hmm. either. Like, my parents... They raised me. Mm-hmm. They did a good job at raising you are me. self-sufficient. And obviously you are making it happen because mm-hmm. you're able to pay for your space. Mm-hmm. So how did you get the whole, from a manufacturing standpoint, you know, your containers? How does that whole process well, work? working on uh, rebranding and mm-hmm. getting new packaging. But mm-hmm. it was honestly, I use um, mason jars. Mm-hmm. And I think that was the most effective, like when I first started out. Mm-hmm. But now that I'm growing... At such like a rapid pace, like it's time mm-hmm. for me to like step it up. So okay. that's like a, the next steps for Butter Love, like new packaging, rebranding, so I can uh, get it into the bigger, uh, the bigger stores. And so, how is that going to work? Because then you're talking about that's a jump to that's from s- and scaling your business. Yeah, but you're going to have to. You're not going to be able to do this <laughs> in your 1,200 foot space yeah. anymore. So, how mm-hmm. are you thinking through that? I'm. Basically, just uh, looking at grants, looking at um, how what it, what that would cost, what it would look like mm-hmm. if I did get my own space. Like, am I hiring employees? Which yes, because I kind of need them now. But <laughs> 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 so it's just a lot mm-hmm. to like because right now it's just me. Like I have like my family and mm-hmm. friends that come over and help make products sometimes. Mm-hmm. But you can't rely I, on family. Can't, right. <laughs> you can't scale on that. Yeah, you right. can't scale. Like mm-hmm. no, my mom is ride or die. She mm-hmm. was just there last night uh, helping me, and she's so funny in the lab. <laughs> like, just, I'm just gonna do this this way, and I'm like, Mom, just please do it the way that I, yeah. <laughs> just do it the way that I need you to do it, please. But she's just like, that doesn't make sense, and I'm like, Girl, <laughs> stop. <laughs> but so she doesn't want me to hire employees. She's like, mm-hmm. Well, I can help you. You can hire me, and I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm all for that. Mm-hmm. Like you're. A, a really good support mm-hmm. system for me, but I have so much other things to think about, not mm-hmm. just the production of product. I have accounting, I have uh, marketing, I have um, managing customers. And right? how are you doing all that? How do you do it? By the seat of her pounds, by the look yeah. of her face. <laughs> I wake accounting up every day. and paying taxes mm-hmm. and making sure you don't... Orange does not look good on everybody, and mm-hmm. especially behind bars. I know. <laughs> I know. I just kind of take it one day at a time. Okay. I have a schedule. When I wake up, I try to get things done throughout the week. Mm-hmm. And since I am full time, I have a lot more time to do those things. Okay. So I just make it happen. I don't know how. I just kind of do. <laughs> so scaling is obviously part of your plan. Today, if somebody's looking to buy Butter Love, is it still at markets and, and shows? Or can yeah. I buy it online? Yes. Or are you in any retailers? Yes. I, you can buy it online. Uh, I do have a website. It's butterlovebylc.co. Mm-hmm. And uh, you can also buy it at a couple of uh, my retailers in St. Louis. Uh, Max Local uh, Buys is one of them, mm-hmm. where I'm going to be hosting the workshop. Um, Union Studio on Tower Grove Avenue. Mm-hmm. They have a really good they have a really good platform mm-hmm. for local makers in St. Louis, okay. and it's a beautiful store. Mm-hmm. You should definitely go check them out. Mm-hmm. And um, I do a lot of shows as well. Like, mm-hmm. the holidays are coming up. I'm so booked. <laughs> good. <laughs> right. And still, like, getting inquiries, like, every day. And I'm like, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? <laughs> <laughs> like, but it's it's exciting, and mm-hmm. it's, like, motivating mm-hmm. me to do more and to keep pushing so I feel like that's my motivation. Like, okay, it's there. People want my products and mm-hmm. that's amazing. So so when you started, it was really this friend seeing potential in you and you then believing in his belief in you, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Today, what what is it that drives you? Is mm-hmm. it, Did something click and, and it went from doing it because, you know, you're, you were up for the challenge or or willing to go out on faith and and the support of others or is it now about being a businesswoman and an entrepreneur and I think it's a mixture of all of that. Yeah. It's a mixture of 
having a product that people actually like and having a product that actually heals and mm-hmm. people are taking heed to that and providing them with the things that they need to mm-hmm. feel better. Like I get feedback every day from my customers about, oh my God, this has really changed my skin. And Mm -hmm. like, I'm all about self-care. Like, what can I do to do this? Or Mm -hmm. your skin like healed my psoriasis or Mm -hmm. healed my eczema. And I'm like, yes, that's awesome. (laughs) (laughs) And I've heard you mention healing a few times Mm -hmm. now. So that seems to be a deep part of the ethos of your business and your approach to your product development. Yeah. It's, it's really just the love of healing that Mm -hmm. kind of gets me through because I use my products through and through. Mm-hmm. Like, I use them every day. Your and- testimony. Yeah. Because <laughs> when you walked in here, we smelled you. <laughs> <laughs> but also, it seems like this whole journey has helped mm-hmm. you heal from the things that brought you back yeah. home to yeah. regroup, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It literally you has know? changed my life. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. in ways that I couldn't even have thought back in 2014. Like, I didn't really even know who I was. I was 24. And just kind of lost, you know, like yeah. that time where you're just going That's through a transition. That's usually what happens in your 20s anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Don't worry about that. Oh, 30s are going to rock, trust yes. me. <laughs> I love my 30s. Oh, man, and I'm And speaking excited. of that, where do you see yourself, you know, in about five years, 10 years? I don't go beyond that. Where do you, where do you see yourself? <laughs> five years, because I don't even know where I'm going to be tomorrow, honestly. So five years, you, as far as business. Like to be? Yeah. Mm-hmm. As far as business, I would like to be... Definitely in more stores uh, globally. Mm-hmm. Um, I want customers from all over the world. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to definitely have a fully functional um, like location. I don't know if I would do a storefront or anything no like that. No brick and mortar? Yeah, I don't. I mean, if I do, it would just be for fun. Mm-hmm. Like, it wouldn't be like... That's a lot of work for a little bit of fun. Yeah. I like pop-ups. Is that what you're talking about? Like, like a pop-up? No, like if I do, I do a lot of pop ups. Mm-hmm. So I want to kind of scale that back because it is kind of hard on my body mm-hmm. carrying all of that. <laughs> and <laughs> I try to make it as efficient as possible, mm-hmm. but it's just hard work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I want to kind of dial it back. I want um, online sales to be consistent mm-hmm. and just that kind of drives like wholesaling and online sales would be kind of where I'm at. So you put that advertising marketing degree to use, huh? Yeah. That's great. <laughs> As you reflect on on this work, I know one of the, the words I've, I've heard you use and I think is in some of your materials is alchemy. Mm-hmm. So what does that mean to you and how does that relate to your mm-hmm. entrepreneurial experience? Well, really alchemy is just, to me, a mixture of what you have in your heart and what the earth provides and you mix that and you create like things that are going to heal from within. Cause my products are more so for healing on the end, like more internal Mm -hmm. so it can thrive on the outside. So like my body butters, they're made with um, shea butter and coconut oil and they deeply like penetrate Penetrate. your Mm -hmm. skin. So not only are you healing yourself from the outside, you're going to be moisturized, but it mm-hmm. deeply penetrates your skin so you can shine kind of mm-hmm. like shine from the inside yeah, shine out, from the inside out. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like that's so important because mm-hmm. you want to like just because you look good on the outside, it doesn't mean that you're feeling good on the inside. Mm-hmm. So I kind of put those things together to create a product that where people just feel loved and just oh, that's good. That's, it's so wholesome. That's what it is. It's very it wholesome. It smells good and it's wholesome. Yes. Yeah, it's we're yeah. wholesome. Yeah. So one of the things you you mentioned, uh, just the idea of you got to tr- start, right? Mm-hmm. That, that so much of it, if, if you're thinking about being an entrepreneur and, and following your passion and mm-hmm. taking that thing that has meant a lot to you personally and seeing if there's a place for it in the rest of the world is to just start. Do you have any other words of wisdom or, or reflections on your own journey that you would share with our listeners? Um, yeah, I, I just feel, honestly, I've, I've come so far and I think the biggest thing is what I said before is like just starting and believing in yourself. I feel like that's so important because a lot of people don't have that, like, right. yeah. but if you have something and then you introduce it to someone else and they believe in it, then you, you got something <laughs> and just keep moving with that and just keep grinding, keep growing, mm-hmm. keep evolving, always keep transitioning. Mm-hmm. And like, if your business kind of goes into that and if it grows beyond you, that's amazing mm-hmm. too, but you just got to start somewhere. 
But it's exciting. You're on the cusp of it growing it beyond you. It is. I know, and it's scary, but awesome <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> but you do, you're doing exactly what we talk about on this show. You stepped outside of your comfort zone. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, at 24. Yeah. You stepped outside of it and said, I, the, what I thought I wanted to do is not what I want to do. In fact, it kind of overwhelmed me and took over and right. took me places I didn't want to go. And right. then you... Spent a lot of time figuring out mm-hmm. where you wanted to go next. Exactly. And entrepreneurship was part of that. Exactly. And it's kind not a like perfect those. road. It's yeah. not a perfect road. And it everybody's and journey is different. Everyone's journey is different. Mm-hmm. So we are, we are, we uh, want to come along for the ride with that journey. And we want to share it with others. <laughs> yes. I think the more we can sort of peel back the, mm-hmm. you know, whether it's, I, I'm, looking at a Zuckerberg and saying, I can't do it because I don't have X, Y, or Z, Mm -hmm. but, or, or looking at Butterlove and saying, well, you know, she's got it all figured out. I could never (laughs) take it from something in my bedroom to something on, on the store shelves. There's a lot that happens between point A and point B. And and you described it, you, you, your hand gesture was one of waves. Mm -hmm. And, and I think that's if, if you're lucky, right. And sometimes it's, all of these squiggly lines mm-hmm. that backtrack over each other and get all jumbled up. And then, mm-hmm. oh, wow, there's actually a path here afterwards. And you've got after great I've support taken time too. to reflect on, yeah. on what's there. So I, I think it's really important for us to make sure that as we tell our stories, that's why I love that you were like, hey, the reality is it didn't go so well. Right. <laughs> the reality was I wasn't doing exactly. so great. Yeah. That's right? what people that, need that's, to hear. That's part of the journey, yeah, right? Exactly. And that's part of the truth in, in, right. in exploring what it means truth to be Truth in advertising. Very much so. <laughs> And if you take a risk, I think you just got to do it. You got to like take a leap of faith. And if you fail, you fail, but don't give up. That's a wonderful. It is. That's a wonderful sentiment to end our yes. time together on. So thank you for carving out time yes. from your business thank to reflect you. on it, to share your story, to inspire others. We thank really so appreciate it. Yes. I'm happy to. <laughs> Yay. We're just going to sit here and live, like smell her a little bit more because she smells so yummy. And if you want to find her products yes. and smell yummy too, just let's, let's remind them where your, your website. It is butterlove by lc.co. Awesome. So place your orders today. Yes. Um, again, you might be listening to us after the new year and her busy Christmas season, which means that you're just in time for Valentine's Day. There you go. Easter, Passover, and anything else you want to celebrate. So Birthdays. always a good time for butter love. Uh, yes. Exactly. Give the gift of butter love. Excellent. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you. Changing the way you view new ventures, igniting your thinking about entrepreneurship. It's Entrepreneurially Thinking. Get connected and discover more. Visit our website for show notes, resources, information about our guests, upcoming events, and of course, all your favorite episodes. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them for us in the comment sections. And be sure to leave us a five-star rating on iTunes. The best way to show love is to share. Let everybody know that you're thinking entrepreneurially. So visit our website, entrepreneuriallythinking.com. Hashtag EthinkSTL. Entrepreneurially Thinking is another positive production of Rare Gem Productions. Thanks for listening.